Welcome, welcome, everyone. Let me dive straight in, then I don't take too much of your time again today. I want to speak to you guys today on this idea. Emotions are data. They are not directives. Emotions are data, information, intelligence, um, feedback, but they are not directives. They are not evidence. They are not commands to behave in a certain way. And I say this because I think most of us humans assume because we have an emotion, it belongs to us. And because we have it, then we are supposed to do something with it. And before we think, we jump into expressing that emotion in whatever way we do it with anger or sadness or unreasonableness um, or euphoria or excitement or whatever it may be because all of those things can be can be unhelpful too at the wrong time so if we'll sit back a little bit and think of emotions this way emotions are not yours they are not mine emotions are like wandering energies emotions are like wandering vagabonds <laughs> and energies looking for a host Emotions are homeless and they're looking for a home and they want to find one with you and with me because until an emotion finds a human host, um, it cannot have any expression into human experience. So there's all these emotions out there and if you see every emotion as something to be responded to and expressed and even become part of your personality or a mood or a habit or a temperament then you give a home to rogue emotions that never belonged to you in the first place but if you'll see this is data it's information um it's feedback it's incoming intelligence and i'm going to see it as that and before I allow it to become any more of that, and there are many new kinds of emotions right now, guys, as we all know, arriving by the day in this pandemic, there are new emotions that are incoming. There are new kinds of incoming um, feedback, emotions we didn't expect and we haven't dealt with before. And just because we're in a disruptive time, doesn't mean that new emotion has to be taken on board and expressed as if you're obliged to dance to its tune. You are not. Emotions are data. Listen to this carefully now. Follow this carefully if you can with me. Emotions are data. Feelings are our interpretation of that data. Emotions are data. And for emotion to become a feeling, and the feeling is then what we feel physically, and we feel it in our biology and our physiology, we feel it, then we are expressing it. But there is a fine line. This happens so fast that we don't know that it's possible to separate it out. I'm slowing it all down. I'm putting it into slow motion with my language to say it's an emotion. It's data. It's just data. But within a split second, because we have not, learned how to slow this down and count to five or ten we instantly are expressing that emotion um and if you've grown up in a family by the way as i mentioned the other day with inherited framings if you've grown up in a family or a culture or environment where people just expressed any emotion and you grew up around drama then you've never had it modeled for you to not respond to emotion and to not start to get involved with it instantaneously because that's what you've always done but it is not serving you well as you know so for emotions to become a feeling the emotion needs to be giving a meaning given an interpretation given an angle given an understanding um given a why given a what and the moment you give the data the benefit of that, it begins to embed itself in your, in your psychology and it begins to inhabit you and it becomes a feeling. 
And now the moment you say, well, I just feel this. If you believe that you feel it and it, it, it is a physical feeling, then you can't understand how that may not belong to you. And what we need to learn is we need to have greater border control between emotional data and reason. Where emotion meets reason, and that reason gives the emotion a name and it becomes a feeling, between the incoming data of emotion and your reasoning of what that means, there's a border. There's a, if you can imagine it as a border, um, from now on, you can't see it or feel it, but you, you mentally have an option. You have a border. And most humans have zero border control and you have to lock down the borders like the world is doing now with this pandemic because there is a pandemic always of emotions that are looking to become feelings and once they're a feeling, they have a home. And now they can live forever in our lives because the data found a home called a feeling and the feeling becomes your temperament and your personality and your habit of life. And now you live governed by these feelings that entered your world years ago simply as data perhaps. But for years now you've had these feelings and this drama propensity and this negativity um, or this cynicism or this sarcasm or this fear or this anger because the data became those feelings. And those feelings now have taken on a narrative. And you've given narrative to these feelings and made friends with them. And they are running riot like an illegal immigrant committing crime um, in the country of your life. If I can use the metaphor of all of that to help you understand, to think differently about emotions and feelings that there needs to be border control. Otherwise, every emotion becomes a feeling, every feeling becomes a behavior, and those behaviors in a prolonged way become habits and temperaments and personalities. And you get to a stage in life where you don't recognize yourself anymore. And these feelings will cost us. It'll cost us relationally, it'll cost us opportunities, it'll cost us promotions at work, it costs us um, influence and it costs us connection with people um, and it costs us creatively because we have lived this way in the trap of these feelings for a long time. So I know this is tough because the older we get without hearing what I'm telling you now, the more difficult it is to... Um, to become an immigration officer and go on the hunt for uh, illegal immigrant feelings in your life. But you all know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know that the feelings that you are given to regularly, that you know are not working for you. And I want you to back up a little bit, think, hold on a minute, I'm not sure where that came from. And it doesn't matter whether you do or not. If you can notice it quickly, great. That's what this is about. If you can notice it quickly and stop it early, great, with border control. The ones that are already inside and over the border, I'm encouraging you to ask, what's that? where's that come from? What is that feeling? I'm going to stop that feeling running riot in the country of my life, as it were. And I'm going to arrest it and kick it out. And then from then on, I'm going to have careful, intentional border control between data and reason, between incoming intel and me giving it a definition and giving it a story and giving it a name, then it becomes part of who you are. Whether you wanted it to or not, it does because we don't know we have the power to stop it at the border. Hope you're all okay. A couple of minutes and then I'll let you guys go. Because feelings are physical. I'm not denying that these feelings are not physical. And you may be saying that, look, Paul, I, I just feel that way. I feel it. I understand. 
And not all feelings are wrong and not all feelings are to be kicked out, of course. But the ones that are con con consistently destructive and weakening and debilitating and undermining um, are the ones that I know we have and they're physical. And then when we give these physical feelings um, emotional connotations and those emotional connotations which I'm calling feelings um, are governed by the historical narrative of our lives. So they don't just, when, when, a, when an emotion gets over the border and becomes a feeling today or tomorrow, um, it doesn't start afresh in your life. It attaches itself to previous cognitive biases, as I mentioned the other day, that we don't know we have. And the feeling just adds to what was the drama that was already there. Now the drama increases. Now the fear increases. Now the negativity increases. Now the insecurity increases because it's a new feeling, but it just finds a home in the faulty narrative we already had and strengthens it. And that narrative gets more entrenched and we get more and more stuck. So emotion and reason work like a seesaw. Emotion and reason work like a seesaw. The higher the emotion, the harder it is to think straight. So if we are given to feelings and every emotion becomes a feeling, then we live in heightened emotion and we can't think our way out of it because emotion and reason, as I say, are like that in our humanity. So the higher the emotion, the Lord, our ability to think our way out of it. So we have to bring this emotion down so that our thinking can be straighter. Because whenever we like this, our thinking's down here. We're in panic, reaction, overreacting mode, defensive mode, lashing out mode, locking up, um, cutting ourselves off mode, depression, anxiety mode. Because emotions appear in charge over it, kinging it governing it, leading our thinking. So we're going to bring emotion down, which starts afresh today with border control because all these new emotions that want to take on feelings and become part of your life, if you weaken that border control, bring it down, then straighter thinking will emerge in your life. Suddenly you'll have clarity and definition and be able to see your way out of something and being able to easily see a cause and an effect, be able to easily see a process that you were ignorant of and take charge of your life and your thinking. And then you can make sounder decisions. You can determine better outcomes because you have more, you have more self-determination when you're thinking straighter instead of emotion hijacking your thinking and giving you outcomes you don't want. Um, and if you can't think straight, you can't override your default emotional version of your life. So I know that's a lot for you to take in. But this will be on 24 hour IG story for you to look at again, perhaps and slow it down, take a few notes. Uh, but in this time of this pandemic, this pandemic, and I, I watch TV, listen to people all the time, as you guys do, and I'm feeling it too. I'm feeling the, the, awareness of lurking new emotions that want to jump over the border in a time when I am not guarded, when I'm trying to get everything else, keep all the plates spinning as it were. Some of you are in that zone, I know. And they get over the border because we're not looking. So I'm advocating that we see emotions as data. Stop them there. Whoa, this is not mine. Don't know what this is. It's homeless but it's not living in my house. It's an illegal immigrant. It's not coming over my border. I'm shutting it down. It's not bringing um, its virus to me, to use that current metaphor of negativity and fear and anxiety and insecurity and threatenedness. It's not doing that. I'm going to stop it at the border and not let it become a feeling that I give a name to. Then it becomes part of my life. And a year from now, it adds to the complexity of our humanity when we didn't stop it a year earlier. So I'm giving you tools to stop stuff at the border, 
to lock your borders down, to say to emotion, your data, interesting, mm, okay, I know it's an option, no thanks, not today, do not disturb, keep moving, someone else may want you, but I don't, is what I'm encouraging us to try and be more intentional about.